Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 LUW Tips and Tricks video tutorial part 21. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to overwrite current committed semantics for a specific select query. Now, before getting into the scenarios and solution, let's first try to understand what is the current committed semantics behavior is all about. So the current committed semantics is actually a database level CFG setting which can be uh, set uh, using this uh, parameter db parameter cur underscore commit you can set it as on or off at the database level uh, what will happen is let's say if there is an application one which is trying to access a record in a table and it is performing some update and it has still not committed the transaction so there is a record in a table with uncommitted update so under that situation if another application is trying to access the same record uh, if this particular current committed behavior is enabled what will happen is instead of waiting for the lock to be released so the app to actually the transaction if if it is trying to access the same uncommitted uh, uh, record it will actually wait for the other transaction to uh, you know uh, release the lock so either it has to commit or roll back so it will wait for that particular time that's the uh, default behavior like if the current committed is not set okay but what will happen if you set this parameter is uh, the application will not wait instead it will return the current committed version of the record so instead of the new updated value it will see the old value itself so that is the advantage so the advantage is like increased concurrency for applications so what will happen if the current committed uh, setting is off uh, the uh, the app 2 which is trying to access the uh, record with uncommitted update it will have to wait for the other transaction to either commit or roll back the transaction eventually it will also time out so if, if the if the other transaction is not releasing within the lock timeout parameter setting it is going to time out now the scenario that we are going to discuss is uh, if in the same uh, application for a specific set of queries you want the current committed behavior to be applied and for another specific set of queries you don't want the current committed behavior to apply see because the cur commit is a db cfg level setting so what because if you just set it as on it will be enabled for the entire database so how to control for certain set of queries I want this behavior for certain set of queries I don't want this behavior right the business scenario can be like that so the solution for that is you can use uh, like this the query the solution for that is wait for outcome class you have to use this in your select query so select star from table with CSR RS so this particular uh, wait for outcome class will be applicable only for select query and uh, CSR RS uh, isolation levels okay uh, so you can use this kind of query so if you are using without the wait for outcome class then the current committed behavior will be uh, applied okay if that setting is on then the current committed behavior will be applied uh, if you are selling uh, you know querying select star from table wait for outcome like that then the current committed behavior even if it is set for that particular query it will not be applicable and another important thing is the wait for outcome class even overrides the following registry variables so like db2 skip inserted db2 skip deleted db2 eval and committed these kind of uh, registry variables can be set to on or off at the instance level so even this particular uh, functionality can be overridden uh, by means of the wait for outcome class okay now there are limitations with the wait for outcome class uh, it applies only to select queries as i have said earlier and it applies only to CSR RS isolation levels. Always please refer to DB2 Information Center for more detailed information regarding this class. Okay, let's look at few examples for better understanding. Okay. So here I have a already there is a database, test database is available. So in that there is a table called account summary which has account number, the you know the name of the person who is holding the account and email information for that particular account uh, holder and the balance information the, the balance amount uh, that is uh, ha in the account okay so now let's first look at the uh, cfg parameters so the lock timeout is six seconds so uh, you know to to enable the lock timeout uh, then cur underscore commit is disabled which means it is off okay now uh, let's first look at what is the behavior if the current committed semantics is not at all set okay so this is not at all set now the business scenario is let's say uh, you know there is a customer request uh, to the bank 
indicating that you know uh, i want to change my email address okay so that particular application is app 1 okay so it is connecting to the database it is showing the existing value and it is updating the information like you know uh, let's first look at that okay so as you can see uh, in the account summary table there is one record the name is actually heinz the email id for that particular uh, account name is Dr. Evil at Disney.com. Okay. Now this particular uh, person has raised a, a you know request for changing the email address. So how will we change? So update account summary table set email equal to uh, Heinz at Disney.com where account number equal to one zero zero one with CSI solution level. Okay. So now his email ID is changing from Dr. Evil at Disney.com to Heinz at Disney.com. Okay. But this particular app one is running, is doing its job in the background and it is still not committed to the transaction. Okay. So in the meantime, right, the teller queries for personal information. Okay. So the bank teller queries for personal information. So this is app two, the bank teller application. So it is trying to query the data. So you, you are seeing here that uh, that particular uh, transaction has been rolled back because of the lock timeout okay because this uncommitted update was there hence uh, it's not able to uh, give you the it's not even able to give you the details right so to resolve this issue because it brings down the concurrency level of the application right so because uh, say the job may be running in the background but even the teller is not even able to see the current details right uh, so that that is uh, an incorrect way this brings down the concurrency level of the application so what we are going to do is we are going to improve the concurrency by setting the current committed semantics to on okay so now the same thing uh, so go to app 1 roll back the transaction okay update the parameter current commit on then deactivate and activate the database again and again issue the uh, change for the email id request okay let's do that so roll back completed update has completed okay and uh, deactivate and activate as completed and the account summary also uh, the email id is now updated okay and the transaction is still not committed okay now app 2 again the teller queries for personal information so this time when you use the query when the bank teller uses the query so he should be able to see the record correct you know the bank teller connects and he is able to see that it is still not reflecting the uh, uncommitted value it is coming back with the current version of the record which is dr evil at disney.com so the teller can respond saying that sir in our backend systems the email id change is not still reflecting so this will improve the concurrency level so that, that is the idea behind this current committed setting now look at the another business scenario wherein app 1 is doing a check process so like you know app one is kind of doing some kind of uh, deduction in balance right so the background job is doing uh, some deduction in balance amount okay so let's do that okay okay the transaction is committed and now uh, the balance deduction is done so So we are reducing the balance from uh, by 6000 rupees okay now let's so this particular background job is running and it is deducting the balance by 6000 rupees now the teller queries for the account balance information okay now the teller application is querying the account balance information okay let's look at what is there now okay you can see that for that particular account holder the balance is 10,000 right but there is an uh, so this is like a current committed version is 10,000 now the background job that is running has deducted 6,000 from it so effectively his balance will be 4,000 once this transaction is committed his balance will be 4,000 but here actually since we have put the setting current committed semantics as on it is coming back saying that the balance is 10,000 which is actually a incorrect information at this point of time because for this query it is it is like a 
a balance information that we are disclosing or we are accessing so be, uh, let's say there will be some kind of financial penalty involved see what if the uh, customer hines is issuing another check for 6000 then there will be some overdraft right then he'll come back saying that why you have charged me for overdraft i called you that day you told the balance was only 10000 so i have processed another check but you know who is to blame here so that that's the problem so so within that application for some set of queries you want the current committed behavior for some set of queries you don't want the current committed behavior that is the uh, learning here right so in that case what we need to do so instead of this query we should use like this so look at the class wait for outcome okay so now this query will wait for the other transaction to roll back or commit so if it is not doing it will be eventually lock timeout okay so for this particular query for this particular query we have to use like wait for outcome because it's the nature of data that demands because the balance information is a sensitive information which can have some kind of these kind of penalties and things so when you are disclosing this kind of information for within that same application when you are querying for the data you can use the wait for outcome class for overriding the current committed behavior right even though the setting is there at uh, uh, database level uh, like look at the setting now let me show you the setting if the current committed behavior is on right that's why it was showing you the thousand rupees uh, ten thousand dollars balance here whereas uh, here when we use wait for outcome class we are not able to see the the current committed behavior getting applied so within an application based on the business logic we can use the wait for outcome class for applying the current committed behavior or do not apply the current committed behavior that control is there with us okay but it is only applicable for select uh, queries and with cs or rsi isolation levels that's it so uh, uh, see you in the uh, next tutorial please subscribe to my channel db2 luw academy uh, thank you thank you for watching bye bye